There are some who will say that in the name of Jesus, um, that phrase, those words used in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, when Peter says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. They would say that in the name of Jesus does not refer to invoking the name of Jesus in baptism, and that's how we are to be baptized, but that it it uh, refers to the authority of Jesus. So we are still baptized in by invoking the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and saying those titles as the formula when uh, we get baptized. It's just we got to understand that we're doing it by the authority of Jesus. That's how they would try to um, interpret this passage and basically try to destroy uh, water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Um, but I just find it funny because when we go to Matthew 28, 19, which is the verse that, they, that Jesus um, tells them to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, um, it says, in the name of, just like in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. The same same terminology, in, in the name of. So if, the, if it doesn't mean invoking the name of Jesus in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, but all of a sudden here in Matthew 28, 19, it means, mean, means invoking the titles Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, um, they, they basically uh, are, are not recognizing that uh, if it doesn't mean invoking, in Acts 2.38, it can't mean invoking uh, in uh, Matthew 28.19. Therefore, baptism would have no, we would say we would say no no nothing. There would be no name in which we baptize. Rather than recognizing that the name is singular, and when the apostles uh, baptize in the name of Jesus Christ, they obeyed the commands of Jesus to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The one name being Jesus. And so, um, yeah, I think that, uh, that when, when you really just to examine uh, in the name of, in the word of God, it doesn't mean just by the authority of. Now, sure, it uh, in the name of, when you do something in the name of the Lord, you can do it by the authority of the Lord. But just think about all the ways in which you do something in the name of that you need, literally need to invoke the name of Jesus. Like when we pray, we pray in the name of Jesus. And that that is us saying in the name of Jesus. When we cast out devils out of somebody, we, we cast devils out in the name of Jesus, invoking the name. Um, when we, uh, you know, uh, lay hands on the sick for them to recover, in the name of Jesus, that's where the power is. Um, and so in baptism, all of a sudden, in the name of Jesus, they say, oh, no, it's the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Well, you'd never cast out devils in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost because there's no power in the titles Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's no power. That, that's not a name. Those are titles. And that can be given to a lot of different people. Like, I'm a, I'm a son I, because I have a mother and a father. And if I had children, I would be considered a father. And I have a spirit. That doesn't make me, uh, those titles or me anything special. What makes the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit special is what that name is. And that name, above all names, is Jesus. And so we see through the name of Jesus a revelation of who God is. And we can really see that clearly when we start to look at some other passages in Scripture. So <clears throat> when we turn to Acts chapter 4, in verse 12, it reads, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So here there's a name that's associated with whereby we must be saved. Uh, we then turn to Acts 10.43, and it says, To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, the name of Jesus, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Now, this is a powerful uh, verse in many ways. One is that um, remission of sins is associated with his name and believing in him. So, when we look back to John chapter 17, 20, um, how Jesus prayed to the Father, he told us how, how we would biblically believe in him 
uh, for salvation, and that is through the apostles' word, because Jesus says, I pray neither for these alone, the twelve apostles, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. And so their word is the gospel. We believe on Jesus through by obeying that, obeying what the apostles said, showing our belief. And um, that is where we receive remission of sins. And it's like when um, uh, Peter stood up and he preached repentance and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In that verse, he was actually obeying the commands of Jesus in Matthew 28, 19. Um, but also, the synoptic gospel of Luke's account has Jesus saying, and that rem repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And so, repentance and remission of sins were preached Beginning in Jerusalem, after the apostles were filled with the Holy Ghost, Peter stands up and he preaches the gospel, which includes repentance and then remission of sins in water baptism in the name of Jesus. So you can start to be putting all these scriptures together, and we can see how important the name is, and that invoking the name is what it is um, talking about in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. And in fact, in Matthew 28, 19, invoking the name is also spoken about in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's just that you speak the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit by saying, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and then in John chapter 20, verse 31, it says, but these are written, and these are, it's talking about all the, the signs that Jesus did, um, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. So it, it always brings up the name, the name, the name. And then Philippians <clears throat> chapter 2, verse 9 says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So he, he was given a name above every name. And then we compare that with the, uh, Zechariah, which talks about the Lord, Yahweh, and how um, in Zechariah 14.9 it says, The Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. Now we know that Jesus Christ is king over all the earth. And we know that through Christ, um, uh, that one name, Jehovah has become our salvation. It reveals the, the, um, the name above all names, the name by which we're saved. Jehovah has become our salvation. So he's not just our healer. He's not just our banner. He's not just um, our, our provider. Uh, and all, you see all through the Old Testament, God revealing more of himself to us through his, his name, his, his various names. But here he reveals it to us as Jesus, Jehovah our salvation. And that's the name above all names because without that understanding, without him uh, uh, manifesting in the flesh and dying for our sins, then we would still be in our sins. And all those names are great, but if we are, are not going to receive salvation in the end, um, then, um, yeah, just basically all we have is, is hope in this life, and then it's, and it's over. So the focus being on the name of Jesus, and that's the name above all names, the only name by which we're saved. Um, and then we read in Acts chapter 8, verse 12. Just trying to cover a few scriptures real quickly. Didn't want this to be too long. Um, it says, But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. So Philip, he went to Samaria, he preached the gospel. And it says he preached the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ. And out of that teaching they were baptized, both men and women. So it's interesting that he preached the name of Jesus. And obviously, baptism was preached to them through that, and so they were baptized, both men and women. And so we can see that the name of Jesus Christ is really important when we preach. Um, and it's really important in baptism as well. So in Colossians chapter 2, I'll end on, on this note. Um, so I agree with those who say that in the name of means by the authority of. But I, have, I believe that that authority comes through invoking the name. So in baptism, we're, we are to call upon the name of the Lord in water baptism. 
and invoke the name of Jesus Christ because uh, you know that's the biblical way in which um, we're, we're to obey the commands of Jesus and the apostles. And then Colossians chapter 2, I'll end on this note. Uh, Paul says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So he's saying that um, there's people that will come to you uh, with philosophy and, and deception and tradition, religious tradition, um, and the rudiments of the world, and take you away from the focus being on Jesus. So they'll, they'll say, don't focus on Jesus. Let's focus on the titles, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You're, you need to, in order to be complete, you need to have those titles invoked in baptism. But this passage is so against that, that train of thought. Because it continues, it says, For in him, that is in Jesus Christ, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In verse 10, And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. So there you have it. It's the Apostle Paul saying you're complete in Christ. You're not lacking anything. If you've been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are complete in him. And so don't let anyone try to steal from you that understanding through all the, the ways in which they'll you know, twist the word and everything. Just the, the ba biblical baptism is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ with the name being invoked in baptism. Understanding that you're being baptized into his death and buried with him, your old man being crucified and buried, and you rise to walk in newness of life with putting on the new man, Jesus Christ, and walking in his resurrection life and the victory that he has afforded all of us who would obey the gospel, obey his commands. So I will end this here, and I hope that that has helped you in some way to see um, that invoking the name of Jesus is important, and it doesn't just mean by the authority of.